Hey everyone, this is Noel from creationeffects.com with another quick tutorial for you. This is a, an opening curtain animation uh, that I made entirely in After Effects, and I'm going to focus on showing you how to make this part, uh, a curtain opening. And it's not terribly difficult, although it is easy uh, to get stuck on the warping of the curtain to make the motion uh, fluid and realistic. And the first time I did it, I was probably tweaking it for a day or so before I was satisfied. Uh, to do it, it really helps to understand how the graph editor works in After Effects. So if that scares you, I recommend that you just buy the template. It's super cheap. Um, it's only $10 at the moment, and there's a good chance I'll keep it at that. And then uh, you get all this other stuff with it. You get both the left and right curtain with an opening and closing animation. And it has a velvet texture, and there's the 3D theater with the stage and the seating and spotlights and comps for putting in your graphics. Uh, so you can easily put something on the curtain itself or behind the curtain above the stage. And there's also a control layer with slider controls which let you easily customize the curtain in the scene. So all of that for uh, just a few dollars really. But if you still just want to do it yourself, you can just follow along. So let's get started. Uh, I'm, first I'm going to make a new composition. So I'll go to Composition, New Comp, and I'll call this Curtain Pre-Comp. And I need to add a solid layer, so I'll go to Layer, New, Solid, and uh, we'll call it Curtain. And this layer needs to be gray, and needs to be medium gray. Uh, so to get that medium 50% gray, you can just go in here and type in 818181 and click OK. And now the first thing that we're going to do is add that that striped curtain texture. So I'll go to Effect and uh, Noise and Grain and add a Fractal Noise effect. So in here, uh, Brightness and Contrast we can leave alone. Um, in Transform, you want to turn off Uniform Scaling and make the width about 60 and the height can be 1500. And that gives it the striped pattern. Um, let's also turn down the complexity to about 2.5. And uh, the fractal type, you can experiment with these and choose whichever one you like. I like small bumps. I think uh, that's the most realistic. And then you can go down and also, um, we made this 50% gray, this layer, and we don't want anything in this texture to be brighter than 50% gray. Um, so what we can do is change this blending mode to multiply. And that looks really dark, but uh, we're going to change the colors in the next step. So now what we need to do is put this pre-comp into another comp. Um, so I'll just drag it into the new comp icon. And we'll call the new comp curtain opening. And uh, let's change the colors. So I'll select that layer. And we'll go to Effect and Color Correction. And I'll choose Colorama. And uh, this is a cool effect that a lot of people don't know about. And uh, what it does is it maps um, the original colors to new colors that you assign. So uh, let's open the Output Cycle section. And you can see we've got this color wheel and all these different colors which we don't need. So um, we'll take away all but three and uh, set them up so that they look kind of like that. And uh, we got to change the colors. So this top one here is uh, mapping the blacks to a certain color. So let's make that color a dark red. And uh, this one will be medium, medium red. And then this one will be a bright red. And I'll even make it a little orange. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, next thing we're going to do is add some displacement to this and make it look a little more 3D. And we can do that by going to Effect and Distort and Displacement Map. So what this effect does is it uh, displaces the pixels vertically um, based on how bright the image is. Um, horizontal displacement, we don't want to do that, so I'll turn that to zero. 
And then for vertical displacement, I'm going to, I'm going to make it so that it, it changes the vertical displacement based on the luminance, like the brightness. And, um, I'm going to move this to negative 30. So you can see what that did. It raised it up a little bit. Uh, the darker areas are raised up more and the brightest areas stay the same. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is add a warping effect uh, to make it look like the curtain's opening. And the best effect for that, I think, is the um, in distort, go to Bezier warp. And what that does, uh, you can see now that you got all these different vertexes, vertices, and tangents. And if you move them around, you can warp the image. So what we need to do is keyframe some of these to move over time so that uh, this curtain looks like it's opening. So I'm going to open the effect down here so I can see my keyframes. And I'm going to add six keyframes starting at this top right, right tangent. Um, first, let's go forward one second. That's when our curtain will start to open. And I'll add a keyframe for these all the way down to bottom right tangent. Um, so that'll be our starting position for the curtain. And next, let's go forward. Uh, let's go forward four seconds to the five second mark. And let's move these keyframes into position. Um, this one, this middle one, needs to stay in between these two. Uh, I'll move it to about there, and I'll move this one over here. make that one stay in between these two in the middle. Um, so this is the, uh, the general shape that you kind of want. You can see it, it opened and it is swinging now so that the bottom is further over to the left. Um, and now it's gonna swing back. So we want to go forward. Let's go forward two seconds and make it swing back. Okay, that's pretty good. And let's go forward another two, a little more than two seconds. And we'll put it in its final resting position. Um, so now, if we were to play this back, it's not going to look very good yet. But <clears throat> something magical happens when you start to offset these keyframes and it starts to give it um, the look of real cloth. Uh, here you would want this part to be moving first and then this part would would have some drag so it would follow. So what we need to do is offset these keyframes. Um, these top two are for these two points here. Um, these are going to stay moving at this constant speed. And uh, the bottom ones are the ones that are going to come, and they're going to follow the motion of these. Let's move them over just a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. That's the basic pattern that we want with all of these sets of keyframes. So I'm going to do that over here too. And as you get further to the right, um, you don't want these to be spread out as much. So this last one, this group of keyframes will be pretty close to each other. OK, and then one other thing we need to do uh, before we preview this, um, this should look OK, except the motion is not going to be very smooth, because we are, we're using linear keyframes here. Uh, we want to change these to easy ease keyframes. So I'm going to select all of them and I'll right click. And you can't see it, but I'm going to go down to keyframe assistant and then choose easy ease. 
and we're just going to hope that looks good. I'm going to play it. Okay, you can see some weirdness right here. And that was something I, it took me a long time to figure that out, why I was doing that. Um, but I figured out that you can fix that in the graph editor. Uh, let's just select one of these at a time. And in here, this little icon here, you can choose the graph type. So click that and then um, you want to be editing the value not the speed. So make sure that edit value graph is checked. And uh, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make it so we can see this better. And if I, yeah, if you select the one of these, well, all of these have a problem here. You can see that they dip down. We don't want anything like that corner there. We want everything to look really smooth. And you can't just drag this up, it wouldn't work. Um, what I've discovered is that if you just add a new keyframe there, and you can do that by holding down your command, or uh, I guess that's control on a PC, and then switch it to the pen tool, and then you can click to add a new keyframe, and then delete it. And that smooths it out a little bit, but we're going to do it again right here. And there you go, now it's smooth. Let's go back and do that with these other ones too. Okay, now let's play it back and see. So that's not looking too bad. You can tweak that to your heart's desire and make it slower or faster or give it more swing or whatever you want to do. Um, we're almost done here. Uh, something else that you'll want to do is change the quality from 8 to 10. Uh, I was seeing some angles in there and it wasn't very smooth. So if you change that to 10, that'll fix that. And then the final step is to make the texture of the curtain change a little bit over time as the curtain moves. And we can do that in the curtain pre-comp here. Um, first thing we want to do is figure out where we want that, uh, that texture to start changing. So if you select this layer and then reveal the keyframes by pushing the U key, um, you can see the animation starts here. So we'll go there and then go back to the curtain pre-comp. And uh, we want to see this fractal noise effect down here. So I'll open it up and scroll down to evolution. And we'll add our first keyframe. And let's set this to zero. And then we need to go to the next set of keyframes right around there. And we'll go back here and change this by about 300, not 30, 300. And uh, go to the next set of keyframes. That's fine. And we'll make it come back in the opposite direction. You can see what it does when we change this value to the texture. Um, let's bring it back down from 300 to about 220. And uh, we'll go to our last set of keyframes here. Actually, we'll make it go a little past that. And we'll bring the texture back up to about 280 or something like that. And uh, we want to make these easy ease. So we'll select them all, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and easy ease. And that's it. Let's preview it and see what it looks like. All right, I think that's pretty good. Uh, you would probably want to move this over and then it would open from the middle and then you could uh, duplicate this layer and uh, bring it over here and flip it so that you would have a right curtain as well. Um, or you can just buy the template. You know, it's only 10 bucks. You get a lot of stuff with it, and all the work would be done for you, and it's all customizable, so you can tweak it as much as you want. So that's it. Remember to subscribe if you want to hear when I come out with new effects. I'm always working on something like VHS effects or glitch effects um, or the newest big one, which was art effects. 
And you can also like the Facebook page for Creation Effects and stay up to date that way. Thanks for watching.